Ministries International for this midweek manner. I am Elder Craig Gilchrist, and I would like for you to invite somebody by hitting those share and those like buttons. Become a cyber evangelist with us that we might get this word out throughout the world over the WWW. Um, we have already read our announcements, but you're able to come and, and to hit our website. That is www.calvaryforyou.org, and you can see all the events that are taking place during the course of the week here at Calvary Ministries International. Certainly, God has graced us with the privilege and the opportunity to hear the rich and eternal word of God. And God is never without a witness. And today we have a tremendous Bible class teacher. He to me is whom I consider my Dr. Gamaliel and I want to bring him forth at this time, introduce to some and present to others, none other than one of our under shepherds here in the person of Elder Condrid Smith. Let's receive him together with a hearty amen. Put your hands together and give God a great praise. Everybody, praise the Lord. God is good. First of all, I give honor to the Lord Jesus Christ as I usually do. Have mercy upon me, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. I give honor to the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm going to lay right here. I give honor to the Lord Jesus Christ, who is the head of my life, savior of my life, and one day he rearranged my life, and I'm so glad. I continually praise him because of the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. You are looking at a happy man. Glory to God. How about you? Amen. I got some word here for you today. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you. I'm going to try to do like Elder Greg Gilchrist tells me. Take your time. Praise the Lord. Okay. <sighs> Call on Jesus. I'm calling on him. Uh, let's go to the book of Daniel. I always like to get something from the Old Testament and the New Testament. Because all of it is true. All of it is for you. It's the word of God. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. All right, let's go to Daniel. I'm going there myself. And then we're going to try to come back. And, and it, Daniel was awesome. My goodness. Let's go here. Yeah, Ezekiel. Daniel, the chapter number 5, verse 11 and 12, if you will. Anybody with me? Amen. All right, y'all quick. Yeah. All right, uh, Old Testament scripture, we're going to read Daniel chapter number five. I give honor to our pastor and his wife. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. And to the Royal Apostolic House of Calvary and to everyone that is tuned in today. God bless you. God wants to bless you and God will bless you in Jesus Christ's name. Uh, Daniel chapter number 5, verse number 11, it reads, There is a man in thy kingdom. I could really stop there, but I'm going to read a little bit more. In whom is the spirit of the holy gods, with a small g. And in the days of thy father, light and understanding and wisdom like the wisdom of the gods, again with a little g, was found in him, whom the king Nebuchadnezzar, thy father, the king, I say, thy father said it again, made master of the, magic of the magicians, the astrologers, the Chaldeans, the soothsayers. Verse number 12. For as much as an excellent spirit and knowledge and understanding in interpreting dream of dreams 
and showing of hard sentences and dissolving of doubts were found in the same Daniel whom the king named Belteshazzar. Now let Daniel be called and he will show the interpretation. Old Testament. Let's go to the New Testament. Very, very familiar scripture, but we're going to try to tie it together here. Thank you, Jesus. Help me, Lord. I want you to go to St. John chapter number three. Thank you, Jesus. St. John chapter number three. And Nicodemus came to Jesus by night. Uh, we don't have to read all of that, but we can. We're going to touch on it. There was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. The same came to Jesus by night and said unto him, Rabbi, we know that thou art a teacher come from God. No, for no man can do these miracles that thou doest except God be with him. And when I read that first of all years ago, I said Jesus didn't even say nothing to him. He just went on and he said, uh, Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Verse number five, Jesus said, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born of water and of spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. Thank you, Jesus. Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we ask that you will have mercy upon us and lay your hands upon each one of us. Touch our ears, open up our hearts, place your word in our hearts. And Lord God, we are asking you to allow the holy angels to come now and bind every spirit that is not like you. And Lord God, so that your word can come to each one of us and out over the airwaves that we will be blessed in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Help us, Lord, in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. I'm going to talk about the subject this time. Back at Daniel, it says, Daniel verse number uh, 5, verse 11. Anybody back there? Read that out loud, somebody. That's all I want to talk about. Glory to God. There is a man in thy kingdom. Glory to God. And last time I talked, uh, uh, this, uh, we talked about uh, looking for a man. Those scriptures, everybody was looking for a man in the Old Testament. But now he's found you. Because he was looking for you. Remember they had them old uh, 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 stickers on the car and said, I found it. Well, he was never lost. He found you, and you just found out about the found. <laughs> Glory to God. I found it, yeah. But he found you because he, he came seeking to save me. I'm glad. Yeah. He came seeking and saved that which was lost, and I could put up both of my hands lost. I was, but now I'm I'm found by Jesus. So we're going to talk about there is a man in thy kingdom. Okay. Hallelujah. Uh, something about the kingdom. To get into the, and the greatest kingdom is the kingdom of God. Nicodemus said, uh, 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 we know that thou art a teacher come from God. For no man can do these miracles that thou doest except God be with him. I, if I was there, I would have told, Gene, told Nicodemus, Nicky, listen here. We know that Jesus is God who came to teach us. That's the revelation. We know that thou art a man. Thou, no. I'm, 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 I'm slow down, Elder. That's what Elder Gilchrist is telling me. We know, hallelujah, that Jesus is God who came to teach us. Because he is Emmanuel, God with us. And he found us. Glory to God. And now we do, do like that. Yeah, I'm the man in the kingdom. In thy kingdom. Listen, listen. Uh, uh, we've been born again. And what, what about being born again? You got to repent. 
And then you got to be baptized in Jesus Christ's name. Uh, and you have to be filled with the Holy Ghost, speaking with other tongues. And you got to believe in the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. I got all kind of notes and things and little tit tats on that. The Bible is the greatest book on the planet. And if they take it up the space, it's to be the greatest book there. And Jesus' name is the greatest name. It, it, there's no name that's going to be higher than Jesus' name in this world and in the world to come. It's the high. He, mm. Okay, so we got to believe all that. Now, there is a man in the kingdom. Let's see how we can bring all this together. Let me just move here. The Jews sought. For a sign. Mm -hmm. They sought for strength and domination and power. The, the, the Greeks, <laughs> they sought for wisdom and knowledge and understanding. You remember Mars Hill? Here is an altar to the unknown God. Paul said, that's who I'm going to tell you about. Glory to God, the unknown God. They were seeking all oh, something, something new. Remember Mars Hill? And then the, uh, 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 the Jews, did I say the Jews? Yeah, I said the Jews sought for a sign. But the Bible says tongues are for a sign. Not to them that believe, but for those that believe not. We were unbelievers one day. I remember I, I was at work and Elder Morgan told me about well, you got to be, be born again. You got to be speaking in tongues and all that. And I said, now nah, I know if I speak in tongues, this is going to be real. Because I wouldn't be trying to you know, fool and say, uh, you know, something, you know. So, so tongues is for the un unbeliever, not for those that believe, for those who believe not. Y'all just heard Joe got up here the other week and told about uh, uh, this guy came in there and said, uh, uh, I heard you got to be baptized in Jesus' name and you got to speak with other tongues and all that. And Joe said, oh. I, I was sitting there, and I was the first one to him. I said, brother, your prayer is do it again, Lord. Send somebody else. Yeah. That was my, uh, that, and he shook my hand, manly, and uh, agreeing with me. Yeah. That's what you do. Yeah. Glory to God. I, my, I told my wife years ago when the phone rang and they asked him for me, and they, you know, I said, I know it's God because I've asked and I prayed to God and said, Lord, send them to me. When I found out about this, glory to God, that's what I want. Okay, so, so, so the Romans, so the Jews sought for a sign. The Romans sought for strength and domination. And you don't have to try to rule and dominate over somebody else. God told you in Genesis 1 and 26, let them have dominion. You know, just... Be what God wants you to be. And I tell people, and I tell my wife, I am in competition with no one but me. Glory to God. I remember that old man, Elder Brogdon. Uh, I mean, I want to put that man, keep under my flesh, lest that when I talk to others, I be a castaway. I don't want to be a castaway. How about you? You're the man in the kingdom. That's what we're talking about. And then I got the Jews, I got the Romans, I got the Greeks. They sought wisdom. And, and Elder, I wanted you to read this for me because I'm I can I can feel excitement coming on. Hallelujah! Uh, listen, listen, listen. Uh, Second Corinthians four and verse one through six. And when you get down to verse six. Paul, with one stroke of his pen, he probably a couple of strokes, he says, hallelujah, but we're going to read it, we're going to read it. He, he, he said, uh, mm, 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 mm. one stroke of his pen, he says, for God, who commanded the light to shine out of darkness, has shined in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. Glory to God. How do you get that? You know, in the Old Testament, they told you, uh, 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 the Lord bless thee and keep thee. The Lord make his face to shine on you. Yes. Old Testament blessing. Hallelujah. But now the God of peace that brought again from the dead, our Lord Jesus Christ, that great shepherd of the sheep by the blood of the everlasting covenant, make you perfect 
in every good work, working in you that which is well pleasing in his sight to whom be honor, glory, henceforth, now and forever. I put my own little um, in there. But let's go, Elder Cleo Chris. I want you to read for me uh, 2 Corinthians chapter number 4. That verse 6 is one of my favorite verses. Because how do we get into the face of Jesus Christ? Glory to God. Come on, read. Start at verse 1. Oh, let, let me get there myself. Let me get there myself. Thank you, Jesus. Y'all pray for me. Bless God. We're going to tie it together here. We're going to tie it together. The Lord has already got it together. Okay, uh, Elder, go ahead. Therefore, see, we have this ministry. This ministry, you have been called. You are the man in the kingdom. That's what we're talking about. And you are in the ministry of the Lord Jesus Christ, each one of us. Glory, read. As we have received mercy. We receive mercy. Hallelujah. Glory. I'm glad. Yes. Read. We faint not. We faint not. Glory to God. I worked to about 11.30 last night, came home, and started doing my thing. Ain't thinking about nothing, going to sleep. I... <laughs> Glory to God. Read, brother. But have renounced the hidden things of dishonor. That's what you got to first do. You got to renounce the hidden things of what? Dishonesty. Dishonesty. Read. Not walking in craftiness, a comma. Nor handling the word of God deceitfully. Nor handling the word of God distinct, uh, 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 deceitfully. All right, read. But by manifestation of the truth. By manifestation of the truth. Glory to God. Read. Commending ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God. Commending. Oh, read that again. Ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God, period. 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 Full stop. Yes. Selah. Yes, sir. Stop and think about what you just read. Yes. Glory to God. And you know, all these funerals we've been having, we need to think about our own end. And, and you know what? I mean, you know, help me, Jesus. Help you, Jesus. Help all of us, Jesus. Okay, read. But if our gospel be hid, hid to them that are lost. Let's. He's God. Shine unto, Shine unto us. Read verse 5. For we preach not ourselves. We preach not ourselves. But Christ Jesus, but Christ the, Jesus Lord, the Lord. And ourselves your servants for Jesus' sake. Okay, step on it. Verse number 6. Here it go. Let it this time get in your heart. Verse number 6. Come on. Read it. For God. For God who commanded. Who commanded to shine the light to shine out of darkness. All that stuff that the Jews was looking for, a sign, all that stuff that the Romans was looking for, all that stuff that the Greeks was looking for, Jesus is shining in us to give it. How can you get it? Open up the Bible and get in his face. Yes. This is his face right here. The word of God is the face of Jesus because it is Jesus. Hallelujah. Mm-hmm. And that's going... I'm going to give you something to do. Read that. Write it out. Put it in your purse. Put it in your wallet. I got scriptures in my wallet. Thank you, Jesus. I'm looking at you over there. Glory to God. So, we got that, okay? Now I said, I got in my notes. Now read it again. But he just read it again. What he's doing is he's receiving a progressive transformation. Paul is telling us 
we can receive a progressive transformation. You know, out of darkness into light. Hallelujah. Paul says, I beseech you, therefore, brethren. I'm getting ahead of myself. That's all right. Uh, by the, this is where I want to go right now. Okay. There is a man in thy kingdom. This, this, this was the queen that told the king that when you search that, that, that out. Okay. We're looking for a man last week. But here. Uh, the, Daniel, he was, he was master of the magicians, magicians, the astrologers, the uh, Chaldeans, uh, uh, the soothsayers. That's a lesson right there by itself. When we get, we're, when we're born again, God put you up above all of that stuff. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. You're above all of that. Yeah. Then. Uh, uh, we talked about the kingdom of God because you're in it and you're the man in the kingdom. Now, there's another kingdom, the kingdom of heaven. Talk about that just a little bit. Uh, I, I really want to move because I got a lot. I want to get to the good part. Uh, 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 the kingdom of heaven. Romans 10 and verse 9. I'm just, I'm just going to preach and teach and all this see and talk and dissertation and whatever you want to call it. What I know, what I believe in all the time. You can call it a seminar. You can call it teaching. You can call it preaching, whatever. But it's the truth is that I'm after. I'm in this ministry. Hallelujah. And my conscience, I pray for my conscience. I do. I do. I pray for my conscience. Uh, I, I want my spirit, my soul, my body to be in Christ Jesus. And I want my conscience to be clean before him. The Bible says, how much more shall the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit offer himself without spot to God, purge your conscience from dead works? That's what the Bible says. Hebrews 14 and 9, one of my favorite scriptures too. All of it is, glory to God. Okay, so, so, so Romans 10 and 9, I'm talking about the kingdom of heaven. Now, we went from the kingdom of God. I showed you how to get in there. But the kingdom of heaven, anytime you water this down, you're going to get a lot of people. You heard Joe tell you about that man coming in there and talking about, Oh, they've been telling me you got to be baptized in Jesus' name and filled with the Holy Ghost. Send him over here to Calvary because we're going to tell you the truth. There ain't a scripture. There ain't a scripture. There is no scripture in the Bible that you can believe and be saved. I got two all rights. I got more that time. That... Romans 10 and 9 was written to folk that was already saved. To the saints at Rome. Hallelujah. And to the saints at Rome, you the man in the kingdom. There is a man in thy kingdom in the kingdom of God. Because that was way back then, Daniel's time. But there is a kingdom that Jesus reigns over. He reigns over them all. Okay, so the kingdom of Heaven, that's where you might get a little watered down. Anytime you water down, you get big crowds. You know, they'll, you know, they'll take a time for you to come around here. Sunday, Eddie Stevens is not here. Brother came to the altar, and he's, he said, man, I, I want you to pray for me. I like what you do. He said, I'm a worshiper too. I want it like you got it or something like that, he said. I said, that's good. And he said, I speak in tongues. And he relaxed himself and went to speaking in tongues. I heard him speaking in tongues. I said, now, listen, uh, have you been baptized in Jesus Christ's name? And then he said, uh, yeah, I was baptized. I said, where were you baptized at? And he told me what church and what denomination it was. It was out of town somewhere. I said, well, uh, did they baptize you and say, I baptize you in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost? Because that's the way this denomination baptizes. 
And he said, I don't know, I was little. I said, well, what you need to do, you need to know. He said, I said, you need to go get baptized. We need to baptize you today. He said, we can do that because he was, he was ready to go. You know what I mean? So and I wasn't going to let him go, but now I got to get his name and bring. I said, when you do this, I want to call. I, I want to talk with you, show you. Listen, the, the, the kingdom of heaven, you, you water it down, you got all kinds that will come. 1,279 uh, of the World Church Council organizations, the last count that I, I knew of, 1,279 churches in the World Church of Councils saying this is it, this is how we got it, we, this is what we got to do. All these different denominations, but the it ain't never changed. It never will change from the day of Pentecost until now, and it will never change. Not in this dispensation. Glory to God. Uh, some, one, some group talk about uh, uh, speaking in tongues for back then. Well, we're in the same back then as we are in now. This is the same dispensation. The church got started, and it has not changed. Glory to God. So, kingdom of heaven. Then we got the kingdom of men. Hallelujah. Oh. And, and then we got the kingdom of God's dear son. Ha, ha, ha. Colossians 13 and 14. 13, 1 and 13 and 14. 1, 13 and 14. Who had delivered us from the power of darkness and had translated us into the kingdom of his dear son. That's where we at. And you the man. <laughs> there is a man in thy kingdom. We're we talking about that. That's what we're talking about. And then the next kingdom is the kingdom of darkness. Whoa, we just been translated though. Glory to God. We don't have to spend no time there, huh? Yeah. Then we got the kingdom that cannot be moved. Hebrews 12 and verse 28. And you know that's God's kingdom. You know that's God. A kingdom that cannot be moved. And then last kingdom we're going to talk about. Listen at this one. <laughs> the kingdom and patience of Jesus Christ. Revelation 1 and 9. When I'm in traffic, my wife can tell you. I'll be telling get on over there. And but then when I go home, I pray. Lord, please bless me. Don't. I don't want to be at fault in no accident. Oh, Jesus. I, I pray that. I pray that. For, you know, you need to pray that too. If you're driving, glory to God. I don't want to be. Lord, keep me, Jesus. I be talking to them folk. Boy, I'm telling you, goodness. What's wrong with you? Picking your nose, scratching your head, and probably scratching somewhere else. Telling you, my goodness, I be, I, I, I do, I pray for that the they get home safely. I, I'm, I'm, I do that. I'm serious. You can ask my wife. Thank you, Jesus. Now back to the word. Are we in the word, though? The kingdom and patience of Jesus Christ. How many of you know? But don't pray for patience. Have patience. Patience worketh. Tribulation. I heard somebody say, I pray for patience. I said, that ain't not a good prayer. Hallelujah. Yeah. Have patience. Just be patient. Be patient. Say it. Be patient. Be patient. You the man in the kingdom that we looking for. Thank you, Jesus. Now, where am I at here? Okay. Let's go back to Daniel. Okay. That's where oh, we, it's, it's at the 30 hour, I mean, 30 mark, let's go back. <sighs> Pray for me, Elder Gilchrist. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. And the rest, and the rest of y'all. Let's go back to Daniel. Verse, let's go get, get that again. Verse number uh, 5 and verse 11. That's where we took our text from. It says, there is a man in thy kingdom. Now, now what, what, what happened is, the story goes, the king and his people, they were partying. They were partying. And that's when they saw the hand on the wall. Mm -mm -mm. And the hand said, 
meaning, uh, meaning, tika, emphasize. And as it goes on, it says, "Thou art lay, uh, he, 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 he was troubled. His knees knocked together. And we call him knock knee uh, Belteshazzar. His, he got scared. He got troubled. Saw this hand on the wall writing. Man, can you imagine that? But his wife, verse number 10, uh, Daniel 5 and verse number 10, now the queen, when all her royal character, uh, regalia and her beauty, poise, and charm came in. Don't even give her name, but historians got her name here around here somewhere. Uh, uh, now the queen, by reason of the word, by reason of the words of the king, because he, he he said, call all these wise men, the the, the Chaldeans, and all these uh, ones, and, and, and tell them to tell me what this means. And if you can uh, uh, give me the interpretation of this, I'll clothe you in scarlet. And I'll give you a gold chain to go around your neck, and you'll be the third in the kingdom. The king was going to pimp him out, put a red suit on him, <laughs> and, and get him a gold chain, a, a gold chain around his neck. My, my, my. But you know what, Jesus, they had a robe too. I think his was robe like the chairs, probably. Yeah, 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 yeah. Anyway, praise the Lord. And then, so the queen came in there, and she, this, she told him all of these words in Daniel 11 and 12. He says, there is a man in thy kingdom in whom the spirit of the holy gods in, uh, in the day, days of thy father, light and understanding and wisdom like wisdom of the gods mm -hmm. was found in him whom the king Nebuchadnezzar, thy father, the king, I say, thy father, made master of the magicians, the astrologers, the Chaldeans, the soothsayers. For as much as an excellent spirit and knowledge and understanding uh, and interpretation of dreams, God deals with me with dreams, I'm telling you. Showing me stuff. Hallelujah. And showing of hard sentences, break the word down, Lord, to us. Because we have to be the man in the kingdom. Is that right? Yeah. That what you want? Yeah. Okay. Hard sentences. And dissolving doubts. It ain't no three persons in the Godhead. Shema Israel, Adonai Elohinu, Adonai Eha. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. Hear, O church, the Lord our God is one Lord, is one God. And stand on it, stick with it. You'll never go down. Hallelujah. Because he's one. We don't have to compromise. Ask God. Teach me how to teach this thing. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Dissolving doubt. Hallelujah. Mm-hmm. And, and, and were found in the same Daniel whom the king named Belteshazzar and let Daniel be called. You have been called to the kingdom, hallelujah, for such a time as this. Glory to God in these last and evil days. You see how just the other day uh, some more people got shot. This morning or last night or sometime shot. Jesus, keep our minds, purge our conscience. From dead work. Then Daniel was brought in before the king. I got to go. Uh, we could really just keep, keep pulling, 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 pulling nuggets out of those scriptures. He had an excellent spirit. He had knowledge. He had understanding, interpretation of dreams, and showing of hard sentences and dissolving doubt were found in the same Daniel. Call your name. Condridge. Y'all going to call your name like you mean it? Call your name. Yeah. Lift, lift your hands and call your name. Yeah. Condridge. All this is found in us because we got a spirit <laughs> from the almighty God. He himself has got in me. He himself has got in you. Do you know all things? I got 
leeway to having it all. Mm -hmm. Who have known the mind of Christ? But we have the mind of Christ. That's what the Bible says. Let's move. Let's go. Okay. I have heard of thee. This is what the king said when Daniel, they called him. The king says, I have heard of thee, comma, that the spirit of the gods is in thee and the light and the understanding and excellent wisdom is found in thee. Mm, mm, mm. We're going to pray on that. Is that what you want? Amen. What are we talking about today? Go like that. You the man. You the man. We, last week we was looking for a man. We're we, we going to get it. We, we, you got it. You got it. Uh, 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 uh. I, I, I just jump on words. I got to watch my time because I got some good stuff here coming. Uh, Philippians 2 and 8. And being found, <laughs> uh, they, they said that about them, were found in that same Daniel. And being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient <laughs> unto death, even the death of the cross. Now, he did that for us, but we have to be obedient unto death. And we hope nobody pale us against a cross or do anything. We want to live out our lives in peace and in honor and to lift up the name of Jesus. That's what we want. Amen. Amen. Y'all help me. Talk to me. Amen. Glory to God. Make me feel comfortable, Elder. <laughs> so, so, so he already then went to the cross for us. When the Bible refers to the spirit of the gods over and over, that's what they talked about. You get that? I'm going to point it out to you. He talked about, uh, in 11, the spirit of the gods. In 12, is that right? Wait a minute. <laughs> I want to give you the right script. Yeah, the, the, yeah, in the spirit of the gods. Yes, yeah. And then down here in 14, the king says, I heard of thee that the spirit of the gods uh, is in thee. Hallelujah. Let's look at that. Uh, Psalms 82, verse 1 through 6. I'm going there myself. I don't really, praise the Lord. I, I, I do want to move. Hello. Thank you, Jesus. Psalms 82. All right. Are we there? 1 through 6, but we're just going to pick up 1 and 6, okay? It says in Psalms 82, come on, Elder Gilchrist. 1, verse number 1. God standeth in the congregation of the mighty. You are the man in the kingdom. Great, read. He judges among the gods. He judges among the gods. That's with a little g. Okay, verse 6. I have said. I have said. Ye are gods. Ye are gods. Read. And all you are children of the most high. Ye are are gods and all of you are the children of the most high God. Most high God is Jehovah Elyon, yes. God most high. And I already told you, uh, there's no name higher than the name of Jesus in this world and in the world to come. Amen. He's the most high when you break that down and understand it. Hallelujah. And when they was getting ready to stone Jesus, for blasphemy. Jesus says, for what good work are you going to stone me? Many good works have I shown you of my father. They said, for blasphemy. You being a man, you make yourself God. I ain't got to make myself God. He did make himself God, though. <laughs> oh, but you are the man in the kingdom, and you got to solve the problems and the doubt that is in the other folk mind that's in all them other kingdoms bring them out of the kingdom of darkness bring them out of the kingdom of just heaven into the kingdom of God the kingdom of kingdoms yeah. hallelujah teaching them the truth of God's word is that right did I get a man get a man on that so 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 Jesus told them 
it, when they're getting ready to stone him, he said, it is written that I said, oh, I love it, that I said that ye are gods. <laughs> and see, all the time, Jesus feeding them, throwing the word out there. It, 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 they couldn't, couldn't get it, though. Uh, you know, still, some folks still don't get it. They talking about one, two, three persons in the Godhead. Jesus says, isn't it written in your law that I said ye are God? Who is I? I is the word. Who is I? I is Jehovah. Who is uh, Je Jesus? Yeah. All the way. All the way down. Yeah, yeah. Hallelujah. And he told them plainly. But let's go. Let's get, get this here. Elijah, oh my God, Elijah, oh my God. Let's go to 2 Kings 2, 2 Kings. Oh, I, 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 got, I got some good time here. Well, we just, mm, let, me, let me go. It, uh, uh, 2 Kings 2, you feel like running, Richburg. Glory to God, <laughs> hallelujah. Uh, 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 2 Kings 2, verse number 9. Okay, are you with me? Amen. Oh, come on, read, Elder Gilchrist. Glory to God. And it came to pass. And it came to pass. When they were gone over. When they were gone over. That Elijah said unto Elijah. That Elijah said unto Elisha. Ask what I shall do for thee. Glory, read. Before I be taken away from thee. He knew I was, he was going. Read. And Elisha said. Oh, my God. Stay there. I mean, let, let, let's go to uh, 2 Kings 13. We're still in 2 Kings. Go to 2 Kings 13. Lord, have mercy. Help me now, Jesus. Glory to God. Okay? Watch this. Watch this. Okay? Are you there, Elder? Yes, sir. 2 Kings 13, verse number 14. Ooh, we could go on here for a while here. Read, now, read. Elijah was fallen. Now, Elijah was falling sick. He was getting sick. Did not, not, now, we talked about Elijah. This is Elisha. He has a second. He has a, du a double, portion. double portion. Help me out here. Double portion. That's why I got you reading. Glory to God. A double portion of this other man. Read. Falling sick of his sickness. But, 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 but. This man by the name of Joash, man, a sinner. They, they talked about him. That, back over here, before we get over there, Joash, okay, okay, Joash, and he did that which was evil in the sight of the Lord. Mm -hmm. That was Joash. But when Joash heard that Elisha had got sick, in uh, 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 verse 14, read again. Start again. Now. Elisha was fallen sick of his sickness. Yeah. Where he, he of he died. He got sick. Then he died. This is the man of God. Hallelujah. Read. And Joash the king of Israel. Joash the king of Israel that did evil in the sight of the Lord had sense enough to come by there. Read. Came down unto him. Yeah. And wept over his face. And said, I believe the brother got a little repentance, maybe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Read, read. Oh my, father, oh, my father. The chariot of Israel and the horsemen thereof. Do that sound familiar? Uh-huh. When Elijah was taken up, the horses of fire and the chariots of fire came down and got him. Hallelujah. Yeah. Oh, my God. These two men... It, these two prophets represent, you can sit down, these two prophets represent the military strength and might of Israel. Right. Woo! You're talking about, that right now, Russia has invaded uh, Ukraine. And the people sitting around, they should have just shut their mouth and say, here, what you need? Here's my wallet. What you need? He ain't getting on CNN telling everything. We trying to hold back Armageddon. And, and they talking about, oh, we're going to send this and we're going to send this. Shut up and send and do. You don't have to broadcast everything. 
Vladimir Putin listen at every he don't miss no CNN I bet you that I ain't gonna bet you but I know I, I just believe that hallelujah last time I bet I lost five dollars he ain't bet no more <laughs> glory to God thank you Jesus I'll do something else with my want to double my money fold it and put it back in my pocket glory to God that's a good lesson too <laughs> write that down Anyway, but, but, but these two men were the military. They represented the military strength of Israel. And anytime you get horses and chariots, you're talking about tanks and airplanes and uh, ammunition, ammunition. And these two men represented it. Hallelujah. And we're talking about, you, we're talking about the spirit of the gods. Okay? Okay. Now look at. 2 Samuel, 2 Samuel 21, verse 17. Come on, I got to move, Elder. Come on, come on. 2 Samuel 21, let, read, read. Oh, Lord Jesus, I need to go there too. 2 Samuel, 2 Samuel. Oh, my, my, my. Ba, 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 ba. Da, da, da. 2 Samuel, what did I say? 21, 2 Samuel 21, 13. 21. But see, moving into it is so exciting that you just go, it, 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 verse, verse 17. This, this brother, his name was Ishbo Bino. He, <laughs> he was going to try to kill David. Read, read, let's, let's go. Let, verse 17. Verse, verse 17. Because for our time. Abisha, the son of Zerah, Ab Abishai, go ahead, the son of Zerah, secured su David and, smote the, and Philistine. smote the Philistine. Now this big old dude, he was a giant and he had a, a spear that weighed 300 shekels of weight of brass. I, I didn't even try to look up and find out what that, how, how much weight it was his, his thing. But I know that this man killed him when he tried to mess with David. And then go ahead and read. Then the men of David, read that. Then the men of David. Then the men of David. Swear unto him. Swear unto him. They said this to David. Read. Saying. saying thou shalt go no more. David, David, him. David, thou shalt go no more. With him. With, with, with us. us to battle. To battle. This one man, everybody loved David. He, we knew that he was a worshiper and he was a warrior. They told him, this man tried to kill you. No, David, we can't let you go to battle no more. We got to pray for our pastor. Put a hedge around him. Pray for him every day. You need to do that. I do it. You need to do it. Pray for him. Glory to God. You don't want to go through what we went through before. We cover him. Yeah. Amen. He, they, they call David the light of Israel. Uh, 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 uh. Elijah and Elisha, these were important men. And then David. Okay, I, I got to just tell you this because I got to come to a close here. Numbers 11, 16, and 17. You ought to write this down because it's just tremendous. Uh, the people were complaining. Yeah, 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 yeah. Now give us some quail. Give us some. The, the Bible says that they said, give us some flesh. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. Uh, uh, Y'all got a choice this week, huh? Yeah. <laughs> I bet you go be flesh on the plate. <laughs> you got your choice. You're going to be some flesh on the plate today. Glory to God. But they was complaining. And Moses went to God and said, Lord, it's just too much. For me. It's too heavy for me. But God, in his all-wise providence, he said, Moses, go get 70 men that are elders in the church, leaders. Come out. And the spirit that was on Moses God put it on 70 elders. Yes, Is that what the Bible says? Yes, Hallelujah. And you know what? 
You got a better than Elijah's spirit, a double point. You got a better than Moses' spirit. Yeah. You got the spirit of he that rose out of the ground, out of the dead, came ho Shaba. Woo! Glory. Thank you, Jesus. That's right. Uh, uh, just uh, there is, we're talking about there is a man in thy kingdom. Uh, but I want you, but you and I, we, Ha, ha, ha. The Bible's so that's the spirit of the gods. These folk that have lived and done the will of God, their spirits. Uh, Sunday school, uh, Joyce Baldwin tore it up and she did it. And she said, Faithing. We got to keep the faith. And everywhere in the New Testament, talking about faith, it's the faith of Jesus Christ. He is the faith. Glory to God. I got scriptures I can prove that to you. Anybody. Glory to God. So Jesus is the faith. We got to have that. And then we have to follow on. She said faithing and following. And Paul says follow me as I follow Christ. Yes. Glory to God. And how are you going to do that? Put your face in the word, in the mirror and follow Jesus Christ. Now watch this. When you have faith in Jesus Christ, and when you have, when you follow along after Jesus Christ, Jesus does the fighting. Pow, 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 pow. Jesus does the fighting. That's what Joyce told, told, told us in Sunday school. Glory to God. And I, I, I'm, I'm just with that. Hallelujah. Now watch this. Okay. Lord have mercy. Teach me how to do notes, elder. I got ahead of myself, but okay, here, here, here's, here's what it is. I sure did got way ahead of myself, but it's going to connect. I don't care if you make it the engine or the caboose. Jesus is pushing. Jesus is pulling. I like that too. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Watch, watch, watch that. Okay. How many of you would like to have a double portion of Bishop Norman L. Wagner's spirit. Is, you, what you say, it, say, that, say that again. That's going to cause. How, would, how many of you would like to have a, a double portion of Bishop James E. Tyson's spirit? He's going to cost you. <laughs> Hallelujah. And, and, and this is where I was supposed to go, but I got ahead of myself about the gods. Ye are God. Ye are gods. Do I got five minutes? Yeah, okay. Looks like I got six minutes. I can use it. Okay. Okay. Luke. You, you, we need to write this down. Now, I, I, I rearranged this, and God allowed me to because I didn't want to end on a down note. Okay. I, want, I like to end on a high, I guess. Luke 14, 26. Tell me when you're there. And we'll talk about that. Luke 14, 26. I'm going to read. Uh, anybody with me? Amen. Okay. Luke 14, 26. It says, if any man come to me and hate not his father, his mother, his wife. Mm, Jesus, I love him. I love Jesus, I love me, I love my wife. And I, 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 I but we're going to get to understand it. And children and brethren and sisters, yea, and his own life also, he cannot be my disciples. Did y'all read that? Yeah. That's what the Bible says. Lord, I am a candidate to be your disciple. How many of you wish that you had done some things differently in this life? Glory, hallelujah. Wish we'd have done something differently. Than how, but here it is, my lot, my cars, or whatever. Uh, this is what, and then you know, I, you, stop. But, but the comparison of is what uh, the writer Luke is, is giving you. The comparison of how we are to love the Lord Jesus Christ. 
Nothing can compare to our love for him. It should not. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord, and thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, all thy soul, all thy might, all thy strength. And then love your neighbor as yourself. But you got to put God there. And, and the unsaid part of that scripture is you got to learn how to love yourself. Before you be any good to anybody else. It's me, it's me, it's me, oh Lord. Then Matthew 10, verse 39. Let's go there. And I'm about to. Okay, I already did that. Okay, yeah. I still did it out of order, but that's all right. No, I'm fine. All right, are you with me? Matthew 10, 39. Amen. Amen. It says, read. He that findeth his life shall lose it. He that findeth his life. Oh, I'm living a good life. He's talking about more, more than likely. He's talking about I'm retired, I'm kicked back, I'm easing. Hallelujah. But the Bible says there's no discharge in this army. That's what the Bible says. There's no discharge in this army. Uh, my wife and I, we said, we don't know how we went to work doing all that we was trying to do, you know. But uh, I'm trying to get it so that she can take a little break. Thank you, Jesus. She said, thank, thank you, Jesus. Who is that? Somebody told her, don't you try to go. Uh, uh, don't Wonko told her, don't you be trying to go every time he go. But I just want to, she can go be over there asleep. I just want to, just while I'm driving, just, just put my hand over there and touch her. Glory to God. He that findeth his life shall lose it. Read. Jesus talking, he that loses his life for my sake, what? Shall find, Shall find it. it. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Then let's, let's end up here. 1 Corinthians 2, verse number 9. I got two, three minutes. 1 Corinthians 2, verse 9. Are you with me? Okay, read. Everybody. I'm here with pages. You ready? Okay, let's read. But as it is written, I have not seen, nor ear heard, neither have entered in the heart of man that love him. Paul writes this in the New Testament, but he takes it out of the Old Testament, out of the book of Isaiah, Isaiah 64, maybe 2, but anyway, Paul just rearranges it a little bit and he writes the same thing I have not seen. Listen, so I start at the back of that scripture. First shall be last and the last shall be first. I ask God, mm -mm, open up my eyes. That ain't how I do that. <laughs> I ask him to open up my heart. I didn't write that scripture out. Uh, 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 uh. I asked him to open up my heart. Place your will in my heart. Yes. Mm -hmm. So that I and will and with strength and determination to do your will. Open my heart and put your will in my heart with strength and determination. Then open up my ears that I can hear you. Write this down. Job 33. 14, 15, and 16. It says, Yea, the God speaketh once, yea, twice, yet man perceiveth it not. In a vision, in the night, when he's sleeping and slumbering on his bed, he opens up his ears and seal his instructions. Yeah. I pray that prayer. Been a long time. So, so I ask him to open up my heart, open up my ears so that I can hear him even while I'm sleeping. Because he gives me dreams. Hallelujah. He gives me a dream. And then open up my eyes, the eyes of my understanding. Hallelujah. And 
I asked him to teach me how to love him. That's where I start at. I got it wrote right here. I'm just getting excited. I, I asked him to teach me how to love him. Because he's preparing things for me, for you, in the kingdom that, 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 that eyes haven't seen, ears haven't heard. For those things that, those ones that love God, he's preparing something. It's going to be a better life than this life. It's going to be better than this. And it, it won't be no end. It will be eternity. Is that what you want? Eternity with the Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus, hallelujah, forget us not, pass me not, O gentle Savior. We want God, and we want eternal life. So I pray for that. I want eternal life. I I have a, 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 a grandson, and when I found out he was coming, there has not been a day that I have not prayed for him. Glory to God. You need to pray for yourself for your spouse, for your children, and your grandchildren, and future generations. Father, in the name of Jesus, we lift our hands unto thee. Again, Lord God, I'm asking you to buckle on our wrists, the bucklers and the shields, that when we lift our hands, the spirit world will be able to see that we (laughs) are the children of God, the children of God's kingdom. Hallelujah. We ask you, Lord God, to open up our hearts and place your will in our hearts. Hallelujah. And give us strength and wisdom and determination and skill and understanding. Uh, Just like you gave Daniel. That's Old Testament. But we in the New Testament, 13 times better. (laughs) Glory. Hallelujah. And then, Lord, open up our ears while we're sleeping and slumbering on the bed. Give us dreams and visions and teach us how to interpret it in the name of Jesus. And then open up the eyes of our understanding. For we desire to be that man in the kingdom. There is a man in the kingdom. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. Come on, Elder Gilchrist. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. You know what? Come on, come on, stand up here with me. I want to tell you publicly one of the reasons why I love you. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, yes, I'm absolutely. When our pastor, Bishop Norman Wagner, was translated, I was at home. I, I had to wrote down. I was at home and I got a call. Linda Daniels called me. She said, Elvis Smith, come over to uh, St. E's Hospital. I said, she said, it's just come on, come on. And so when I got there, I told Beverly when I left, I said, if, it's, it's, if this is about Bishop, I won't be home tonight. I'll be staying there with him. That's what I told her. And so we had been out to the mall and everything, and this woman saw me out to the mall and had got around. And she knew it mm-hmm. but didn't tell me. Mm-hmm. Later on, I saw her again. Don't even know who she is now. But she told me. Later on, that she said she knew, but she said somehow she sensed that I didn't know. Mm-hmm. So anyway, I told Beverly, because I had been here every night that Bishop was in St. E's Hospital, I stayed there with him. I was downstairs, but then I got up and I went up to the room where he was, and I prayed for him, I went home. And I'd come back all every night that he was there. So when I, I comes over there, and I don't know, I see all the people here, and I ain't, still ain't got nothing. And they folk crying and whatnot. And I said, why are we here? And they told me, he don't know. No, I didn't know nothing. Mm-hmm. So uh, they told me that Bishop Wagner translated. And I told Jerome Jones, I said, where is he? And he said, come on, I should take you back. I went back there to see the bishop. I tell you the God's truth. Yes. And I'll tell you in a minute. I got and over my head, outside of his body, I saw Bishop Wagner in, the, in my mind mm-hmm. doing like this. 
He's shaking his head. Don't pray me back. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And when I came back out, out of everybody was there, you the only one that said, shouldn't we be in there raising him up? That's what you Thank said. You, yes, sir. Yes, Hallelujah. Yes, sir. That's why I love you. One of the reasons why. Glory, and you look like my father's people. <laughs> but, 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 but. Uh, I'm in the family. Yeah, you're in the family, glory to God. But that happened. And you, you, you said, shouldn't we be in, you don't even remember that, do you? Yes, I do. Oh, you do? Good. Yes, I'm glad. I'm glad. I'm glad you remember that. But you said that. Now take over. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> I wanted, I wanted to tell you that. Thank you, sir. God bless you. Glory to God. Come on, put those hands together for the Lord. It was a trying time then. And we have been tremendously challenged since. Reminds me of a particular passage of scripture where John the Baptist who already knew his assignment and his call to the ministry, he knew that he was just a forerunner to Jesus Christ. He knew he was a voice that was crying in the wilderness, prepare ye the way of the Lord. He had the fortunate pleasure of seeing his cousin and being able to minister to his own cousin. Knowing that his assignment was coming to a close, he declared of himself, I must decrease that he can increase. He's arrested, put in jail, waiting for the chopping block. And in that time that all of us have experience of insecurity and question, what's going to happen to us now? Do you remember that day, 2010? What's going to happen to us now? He asked a very powerful question. He sent word to his disciples. He says, I need you to go and ask Jesus. Ask him just one question. Are you the one? Or look we for another. And the question comes today to you. Hallelujah. To you and to you. Come on, turn to your neighbor and ask your neighbor, are you, are you the one? Or look we for another. Now the lesson today was very powerful and pertinent. Because we are living in the end time. Before coming over here, and I'm not going to belabor the time, but I was listening to uh, a particular broadcast and a world-renowned minister whom we know personally. He has been here to this church. And uh, in his discourse on the broadcast, mm -hmm. he said a four-letter word. Not, not with the F, but with the S. And I said, oh, we got cussing preachers now. Ask your neighbor, are you the one? I'm trying to get you to see the severity and the criticality of the hour that we are living in. St. Paul says to us in the book of Romans, it's, third, it's eighth chapter in the 19th verse. He says, the whole earth is groaning. It's groaning, and we're living in a time of chaos, and the world is looking right now, as Paul said, for the manifestation of the sons of God. Ask your neighbor again, are you the one? The lesson today came to us and said there is a man in the kingdom. And I'm here to declare to you, uh, in Ebonics, you be the man. Come on, tell your neighbor, you be the man. You are the man. And we're looking to you. We're looking to you. We're looking to you. This is not the time to be vacillating and wavering in your confidence that you have in the word of God. 
Hear me real good. God cannot lie. Uh, Y'all didn't get that. I said God cannot lie. And if he's put his word on you and he's put his word not only on you, but he has put his word in you, he must bring it to pass. Now I got to stop. All right, saints of the most high God, here know this. You be the man. You are the man in the kingdom. The kingdom of God, the kingdom of heaven, the kingdom of hell. You are the man. Thank you, Dr. Gamaliel, for that powerful lesson and that powerful word. We have been blessed. We have been blessed. Come on, tell God you've been blessed by the word. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. You can't go home and say you didn't hear nothing. You heard the word all afternoon for a whole hour. He took us line upon line and precept upon precept. So you can't leave out here and say he didn't say nothing. He taught you the word. And not only has God spoken it, but he has put it in you so that the world can see the word through you. Amen. Amen. All right. So much for that. We are off the air, I hope. Bless God's high name. <laughs> Hallelujah. I'm sorry. Well, to you who are out here in the WWW land, we are so glad for your presence here in this sanctuary. And there is a number that is coming up on your screen that's showing you that if you desire prayer, you can receive prayer right now. Just call that number and somebody is there that will take your call, receive your request, and pray immediately for you your need. We here in the in this place believe that prayer is vital to the process and we will join with you in prayer that God will overturn it for you and you will receive the victory in Jesus name. Come on saints of the most high God put your hands together and let's give God a great praise. And now it's time for us to receive our offering. And there are ways listed on uh, the line now that you might be able to share in the gospel that has been ministered to you. You have uh, several different means of being able to contribute to the ministry. And we do ask uh, that if you have been blessed by the word that has been ministered here, if that word has pricked you in your heart and enlighten your soul please share in an offering to the ministry so that this ministry can be broadcast across the world and around this land there are a number of ways that you can give you can give by cash app and you can give by uh, uh, givelify or you can just send your money in if you have uh, an envelope that you want to send it to you can send it to Mount Calvary the address here is 1812 Oak Hill Avenue in Youngstown, Ohio, zip code 44507, and we would be glad to receive that. And hear me real good. You cannot beat God giving no matter how you try. God will send it back to you multiplied, pressed down, shaken together. God will touch men's hearts to give into your bosom and bless you richly beyond your imagination. Thank you for joining us in this afternoon's broadcast. And if you desire to see it again, you can tune in to us tonight on YouTube at seven o'clock and you can replay all that has been said this afternoon. And I guarantee you, if you rehearse it, it will bless you immensely. Let's give our God a great hand for our video and our electronic audience. Come on, y'all. Help me bless the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We thank God for everything that has been said to this point. Uh, those of you who need uh, offering envelopes, if they haven't passed them, I think they have. Amen. They have passed them out, uh, offering envelopes, so that you might... 
uh, receive, give your offering and your tithes. Something that I've shared with you before, I share with you again. You never want to come to the house of God without giving God an offering. Now, I know uh, that's challenging for many of us who are senior citizens and live, uh, live on a fixed income, that, that monthly income that only comes once a month. Uh, but if you learn how to budget and set aside something to bless the house of God, I guarantee you God will richly bless you. And if there be no other questions or concerns at this time, amen, shall we all stand? Thank you for uh, being long-suffering with me. <laughs> Glory to God.